Hey everyone, I'm just going to be voicing over a game I played a while back, so hopefully we can all enjoy. This is my attempt with the Forsaken Wastes and a Worms battle group. I'm up against Sweet PPT. So you can see early on I'm just going for the standard deploys. I'm going to try and capture a couple of fonts and see what I can do with that. And let's see what he's going to drop down on me. Because I can see it's a hybrid. Okay, this is a... Ah, uh, yes. Super Champ type BG. You usually see that monk with a Super Champ. So we pop this down. And I remembered, you need to get these guys out pretty early just because you need the necrosis to really start kicking in. So we've got him in play. We've got the Dust Creeper ready to go, ready and rocking, heading down to our bottom font. Leos Monk, comfortable. All is well, looks to be pretty classic start. I'm just waiting to see what his second deploy is. And we're just checking because I want to make sure I know what I'm doing with this guy. Oh, he's an interesting guy. He's got a good amount of HP, great defense. It's just getting a hold of a couple of Nora Globes. And then I'm thrown. He doesn't deploy. So I've gone, okay, let's head into the font. Let's send this guy most likely down. We just need to go collect it. And I don't have any pressing need to really drop anything. No need for me to do anything, so I'm just thinking, okay. Okay, let's chill. Let's chill on this. Let's see what else he's going to do, because he should be deploying something big. At least in... And this froze me. Sending the monk in randomly is okay, so you're kind of doing it in an awkward fashion of what he's up to. Like for me, this is incredibly awkward how he's gone for these fonts. Because I'm just not sure what this is about. To be honest, I feel like something is gonna go wrong. <laughs> that's two turns without deploys, that means he's floating like 150 plus Nora. Which is a lot. It's like, yeah, so we need to kill stuff. Wormlord Necrosis. Finally, something. Draxar Morph. We can see the upgrades. Not taking the regen, which I love. But, um, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I need to keep deploying. He's a little far away, I don't want to lose all that health running away. He's a good choice. He's cheap, he's happy. And I'm like, right, let's might as well go in and be aggressive. If he's only got a morph down and um, a monk, I'm not that scared and I kind of want to push him towards me. The sooner he's further towards me, the better, because I don't want him to go up and get his font. Because why should I? It's like, come fight me. So I know he's got the stun, he's got the metamorphosis. Nothing particularly scary right now. <coughs> like, is he going to try and use the righteous shield on himself? Because I'm pretty cool, I'm happy. You're able to get our deploys in. Mew stun, mutate, what are you up to? What are you looking for? <sighs> Kiagana. Interesting. Right, that's coming in. Invigorate, I guess. Mm, okay. I'm cool with this so far. Spell. Right, that's a lot of Nora. And I'm like, oh, you, you don't have cleanse. Okay, he's used the Invigorate. 
I don't get that move. He should have just hit me twice with the monk. He would have done more damage that way. So I don't really get the spread, but okay. So we've got the other worm coming in, we've got the dust creeper sprinting up. I'm like, I think that guy's probably dead. So we might as well, I'm just like, well, I've got the Nora. I'm pretty certain he's dead, so... Yeah. Let's deny him access to any Nora globe there. Because it's already, we're kind of getting into the let's fight here situation. Drop down another Putrid Creeper. I know it's not a Highlander battle group and I love my Highlander battle groups, but... Yeah. I can't win everything, sadly. I did want another Highlander, but the worms aren't built up for it just yet. So, here he comes. I'm thinking, right, we need to get another stun on this so you get the bonus on Kirkana. So this creeper is dead. But he's still not taking the top font, which works for me. I'm thinking, right, my domain is expanding. My Nora is fine, because I've gained, you know, another, I think it's about 22 Nora over him, just because I've got the bottom font, something like that, and yay, this guy is so obnoxious, he's gonna soak up almost all the AP, and I get the globe. Oh, yay, my little happy wiggle, because I'm like, there's my globe. Now I'm just like, okay, you've got the paralytic strike, need to be aware of that. So I know we're going to have to be bringing our blood fiend in. And I'm just going, alright, I'm trying to think of what the best tactic is for me. Because I've got all the time in the world whilst I wait for him. And we're doing a little bit of counting, Let's see what we can do there, see who's going to be next, see where my deployment zone even is. I'd probably say that is kind of a cool mechanic, but is quite evil at the same time. Okay, so he's kind of lining them up nicely, which I do appreciate. Got to mutate somewhere, hasn't he? And he's got to imbue something, so I'm assuming he's going to imbue the Kirgana at some point. There we go. He's got a little font runner up there. You gain the 8 AP, please. You move all the way up. Yeah. Bring him in. And I'm like, eh, I think I misplayed that a little bit because I moved. Couldn't move the guy close enough. I'm just thinking, right, what is my best move here? What do I need to do? Well, step one, keep deploying. Generally speaking, a deploy is good. This will reduce the damage, give me a bit of protection. If I do a step up, I can get a good hit in. So I've gone step here, well I went step down, keep closer to the one that's got Shroud. So that's fine. I was like, okay, let me put, and I couldn't reach. So I'm just thinking, what else do I need to do? What could be productive? That's kind of okay, but not yet. Yeah, Banner is pretty much a safe call. That just means everyone's that little bit tougher when needed. And the damage incoming is not going to be too hideous because of the um, fear already in play. So up comes his little Valdaki sweeper, I believe that is. So he's got his font at last. I'm just like, okay, everything here is chill. There's the imbue stun. So we're punishing the Blood Fiend. Whilst it's not particularly nice for me, 
It's only 47 Nora. He is not expensive. And we also have the Leos Monk just hitting another one. So his damage is actually being quite split and heavily focused on something that doesn't have a value. Okay, Scouring Jasper in play. So he's dropped it and it's not in my font, which is quite nice. Right, so step one, you've got to do your thing. We're just counting, see what we can do, where we can hit. I do not want that ticking away. It's too much of a nuisance for me. And I think I'm about to just be a nuisance myself. This puts everyone in with a bit of evasive, which is nice. That's good. Bring the blinking creeper up a bit. And like here's the dread. Dread is in range. Let's just make it a bit better. There you go. Every one of them is in the dread range, which makes this a lot nicer. So let's get another. I think I'm going to go for another deploy because that would be the best. That's the question. Or is it better to not go for a deploy and be super annoying? And I'm like, a blight ring on you is pretty good. And well, you thought your scouring Jasper was annoying. How about this one? So I've given him a couple more things to think about. I'm giving Kirgana a hard time. Because now Kirgana is like, if I attack, I lose more health. I'm going to constantly lose more health. There's not enough damage to comfortably burn my relic. Because it can't be done in two attacks. Which is really nice for me. And then I'm like, oh. I'm almost able to deploy in that font. So if I keep adding Necrosis, I'll be able to drop in his font. I'm not going to object to that. So let's see what the next drop is going to be from him. Because he can do one hit. It takes three hits for him to get rid of the relic. Which is significant with this at this point in time because that really alters the dynamic of what he can do. So, okay, we're pretty chill. Fine, we're gonna beat on the Blood Fiend. Not a problem. And the Akeko's Blade. That's pretty good. So again, this is all going on a 47 Nora champ. Okay, a hit, five bleed, not particularly nice. Ooh, another invigorate. And boom, that is a lot of damage. That's nine and then another scouring Jasper. He's just been completely dotted out. So, okay, that's annoying. Fine, you're going to hit him. I'm less concerned about that. So I know I need to get rid of that Scouring Jasper, because that Scouring Jasper is being annoying. So he's gone. You tap, you tap. That's that sorted, so no one's in my font. So let's be annoying, shall we? Yeah. We can binding chains and it's like, well, what are you able to do to me? So I get another deploy maybe. Deploys are good. Then we get more necrosis going. I need free to airdrop. Let's think. Ah! Petrifying Gaze. Now he can't get in the font. He's still in range of acid damage. 
So from this perspective, in my view, he's dead in two turns, which is great without me doing anything at this status point. And now we make it very difficult for Kiagana to come in. So if he wants to come in now, he's going to have some severe issues. And we're just going to drop this guy just because we need the extra necrosis. So everything's slowly building up. So, it's that round now. So from here, probably, in my view, the best move is the Valdaki Sweeper comes in. But I'm happy in the current state. He's got three champions slowly being ground down without any repercussion. Okay. The sweeper's decided to go in. I'm assuming just to get rid of the equip. Yeah. Equipment removed. And a cleansing. Oh. So a cleansing source for Kiagana. But she hasn't really got anything she can do. She doesn't hit that hard at the moment. She hasn't really got the health for it. There you go, 8 damage, healed for 2. This is literally counteracted by the Scouring Jasper on the next turn. And if he's not careful, we're going to have the ability to just start hitting and beating down his Draxar Moth. So let's see which way he goes with it, because you kind of want to be able to tap with it since he's put the blade on it. But he also doesn't want to lose it because it's heavy support and it's meant to stay alive. So I think the decision is being made if he's going to run into the font or if he's going to attack with it. There you go, it goes for the double attack. Still painful, but... I'm being left the font. I'm not going to complain about that. And he's gone for the stun. Okay, that's pretty chill. So as we can see, the Leos Monk is pretty much dead next turn. This Twilight Creeper doesn't have much longer for this world. So I'm just getting him in. For the damage, Binding Chains has done amazing work this game. So that Morph is one hit from death. I think it may be dead to the spell as well. And I'm just getting the Chittering Maw to start sticking to Kirkana to try and finish her off. Let me bring in, yeah, bring in the Dust Creeper, just so we can, I think I'm trying to finish that off, I'm like, so close, should be okay. So everything there is relatively settled, best thing to do, probably, there you go, cleanse that. Now I know that that morph isn't going to get any extra tap in. And I still have enough to deploy the Phantasmal Creeper. Since he's given me the font. Oof, it's really painful now. So that's a good round. Only at 8 health. So close. Let's see what he's up to. Leos Monk is dead unless he has something to do with it. And yeah, 
the aspect of violence. So yeah, definitely a super champ battle group. And there goes Kirgana running away. <laughs> so the frustrating bit for me is going to be chasing that down. I do not want her to heal up and start doing damage. And that's not ideal. That's very not ideal. That's painful. I should have been a bit more careful for that. But the bright side, he is now at least in double tap range. So I can do some work there. Here we are. There goes the monk. Luckily, he has accidentally knocked me into the range of that. I'm in range to drop straight into his font. So I've just gone from font contested to now owning pretty much everything at this point. You'd think at this point, what could go wrong? What brilliant thing could I make a mistake on? Let's watch as I make a mistake. Dust Creeper steps out. I casually look, thinking, right, what am I doing? Hmm, makes sense. We need the market. Might as well put the market there. Drain the Shrine Exertion, which... Yay, now I got double... Nope, that's mistake one. Notice how the Dust Creeper is not in the font. Stupidity strikes. So, randomly, I just gave him mid font. I'm like, well, that was dumb as hell. Right side. I can at least drop straight into it, so I can take it back. So it's not that big of a deal, but I just made my life harder. Completely harder, for no reason. Let's see. So I'm just waiting for him to decide and deploy what he wants to do. Two attacks, kills that off. So, uh, if he takes the Nora Globe, then I take the font. No, I don't. He goes and gets all the globes. He's kind to me. He just runs down there, still in complete attack range. I'm fine with that. He would have actually been safer. Never mind. So now he's in there and he's just a nuisance. Ooh, and the transfigure. Ah, he's just come to contest that font. That's fine. We're fine about that. I'm just there pinching. It's like, hey, no, she's gonna die. So we've got decisions to make. So it's not too bad. Putrid Creeper's coming off cooldown. Quite a few of the champs are coming back, so. Not in a bad state. His job is effectively... Ooh, do I let that kick on or escape? Don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do that. So I'm just putting the Mind Thief Creeper down just so I can get the Paralyze, which frees up the Blinking Creeper to move normally my font. That was just my sneaky, right, I'm getting that now. I can carry on with chasing down Kirgana. And finally, it has been done. So I've only got two champs left, effectively. One being his avatar. And the other being his aspect. 
Oh, sorry, to Cham San, his avatar. I'm not too concerned about the monk itself. And as we can see, my deployment zone is through the roof. So let's see what he's going to do. I think at this point it's just he needs to engage and pick a fight. There's no point in bothering with the chittering more, it's dead next turn anyway. Petrifying gaze is up in a turn or two, so got time to wait. So he gets the Nora Globe and unfortunately for me is engaged to the blinking creeper. I mean, at least the Scour Gem is putting in more work. I can't complain about that. Okay, what is this shrine up to? And okay, he's put down a relic there. And you can drain your avatar, apparently, with extra abilities. So I just need to be able to push down these champions. It's just the aspect of violence that is somewhat concerning. I'm just thinking, how am I going to get most value? He's in play. Not too much he can do. There goes the carrion. Yeah, we can do that, just to say you're not going to do any real damage this round. Which gives me a bit more to play with. Unfortunately, not too much that can do. Right, let's bring this here, just to make sure we can't take the font. And then I can portal that away, should I wish. Nothing that can really do for an attack. So it's just the monk. But I'm not too worried about. And the big debate is what to deploy. If anything, I do need to keep deploying. It does tempt me immensely. Right, that's... I'm thinking, right, I do want to block off this monk a bit. It's loss of life. Fine. We're going big. Go big or go home. He has a big titan, I have a big titan now. And we're going to bring this guy to pick up the Nora Globe, because I've already kept the font. And I'm just going to rely on the fact that I've got Hex to keep it going, and that this monk isn't really able to go anywhere, because if he moves now, he's just going to be engaged or engaged. Fantastic. So, we're pretty good. He's got no damage on that, so the Blinking Creeper should be fine. There you go, still standing. I mean, this guy could come in, which is not great. I'm just thinking this is going to be really strong. Okay, Bastion of Mobility, that's pretty annoying. Thinking, is he going to try and contest a font? What is he going to get up to? That's the main bit. What is he going to actually start doing? That's going to be of concern to me. You can't get too many places that are great. I think he should have gone up. Let's see where he heads off to, though. Here comes that. Okay, never mind. 
That's scary. Because all I want to do is make sure he does not end up with the font. Okay, he's in play. He's got an invigorate. Not sure what benefit the invigorate is going to give him right now. Okay, he's got enough to hit, should he wish. Nope, he's just stockpiling AP. Well, that works fantastically for me. Everyone, get in here. This is an execution order. That's all this is to me. This is execute time. So, Blight Ring, just in case. There it is. Look at it. That's going to be spicy. I'm just doing quick count up, make sure I've got that right. It's only you guys that it truly matters. You. Give him the big smack. 21. Give him another smack. And you execute him. There you go. You've got no damage left. And I get the Norglobe. That's it. Hope you enjoyed watching. Have a great day.